Some of the most beloved DMs on the planet have some great tips and tricks that help keep your players from getting bored during combat. And while you'd have to use these at your table, understanding exactly why these DMs use them and why their players respond so well to them will help you present your own combat in a way that means your players will never get bored. But first, a quick thanks to Obvious Mimic for sponsoring this video. Their super successful 5e solo adventure, The Wolves of Langston, is getting a spiritual successor. The Crystals of Zileth is now on Kickstarter. Check them out in the description. And let's start with a simple one. Brennan Lee Mulligan is famous for adding banter and roleplay to his combat. He uses his enemies to rile up his players. He has them shouting things out all the time. And this makes combat feel like it's not just number crunching. And the dialogue is pretty much always linked to the story. And this means that in Dimension 20, pretty much every combat pushes the narrative forwards in some way. But doing this in your home games will make fights feel much more meaningful. If you throw too many encounters at your players that just don't mean anything, these fights will start feeling like chores. A bit like in a really grindy video game. Pointless combats are fine in small doses, just don't overdo it. And next we have Matt Mercer on deck, but really Brennan's point is all about trying to make as many combat encounters as you can tie in with the overall narrative. Combat should just be another scene in your story. And there's a storytelling trick that says that every scene should do one of two things, push the plot forward or develop character. If a scene in your D&D game doesn't do one of those two things, it's just filler. Okay, next let's talk about Matt Mercer. You might have noticed I said he was on deck a few sentences ago. That's not the big thing that Matt does to stop his players getting bored in combat, but it is worth talking about. Matt often tells his players when they're up next, even though the current person's go isn't over yet. And this accomplishes two things. It allows the person who is up next to think about what they're going to do, like pay attention, so when it is their turn, everything goes way faster and smoother. And it also gently reminds the person whose go it is right now, currently, that there is an initiative order, someone is waiting to go next, which more often than not spurs them into making decisions faster, as to not hold up the game. But the big thing I want to talk about that Matt does to stop his players getting board during combat is battle mark designs. Now this really is not for every single DM, but if you do enjoy a bit of arts and crafts, making a really good looking set for combat can make all the players excited to play in that space. It also makes the whole thing way more memorable and allows the combat to become more dynamic with things like elevation and terrain affecting the way your players play. And if you want to do this on a bit more of a budget, I recommend something like this. These are battle map books that I just got off Amazon. I'll link them in the description, but you can just choose a pre-designed map, draw on it, or even just throw on your own terrain, and in no time at all, you'll have your own interesting dynamic battlefield. You can even add other books on the side or on the end to increase the battle space. Okay, next in the initiative order is Ibria Iyengar, whose tip is to create secondary objectives during combat. In an interview, Ibria suggested using a save, destroy, or infiltrate method. Don't just have your players there to kill something, have them there instead to maybe save someone, destroy something thing or infiltrate an area. And there's a lot more other options when it comes to this, but the idea is having secondary objectives. And something that Abria feels strongly about is have the whole thing kind of optional. There should be the potential for the players to skip the combat entirely. Could they save someone, destroy something or infiltrate somewhere without actually putting themselves in danger? This takes something that would not normally be in the player's control, like when a fight against a big bad is just triggered by them entering a room and instead gives the agency back to the players. If they want to try and avoid a fight, let them try and avoid it. Mark Humes, DM of the High Rollers actual play, has very similar advice. It's kind of cheeky, actually the next two points are all kind of very similar to each other, but it's interesting to get the different DM's perspectives. Mark likes multifaceted combat. Combat is the most interesting when there are other stakes involved. For example, if a monster is attacking a town, Mark tries to draw attention away from the actual fight and towards the townsfolk in danger, or towards the buildings being destroyed by this rampaging creature. Or Another example he gives is, say, just throwing monster after monster, tons of creatures at your players that just keep coming back even when they're killed. Because to get past this combat encounter, the players actually need to destroy the portal that they're coming through, which takes skill checks and actions to do. Once again, Mark is drawing away from the actual fight, the enemies, and drawing attention towards the way they're entering. So like a rear, Mark's combat style is just drawing attention away from hitting something till it's dead. The combat is still there, and if you have players that do really want to just hit something, they can. But if you also have players who want to figure out other ways around it or want to do skill checks and solve puzzles during the fight, they can too. And next up we're talking about Antonio D'Amico, aka 
aka pointy hat. A Bria and Mark want to add objectives to fights and shift attention away from the actual hitting a monster. But Antonio has a great bit of advice, and that's to change the primary objective of combat completely. A few examples from the pointy hat are racing, style points, where the combat becomes a bit more of a performance, or the big one, have your team compete in some kind of sport. Antonio has a whole homebrewed D&D sport available for free on his channel in the link of his video about all this. That's another link in the description below. He talks way more in depth about all these things. But if you do leave this video to go watch that now, please make sure to subscribe and like this one. Maybe even check out my Patreon. All links in the description. It's going to be a big link day for the description. But the point here is that Antonio likes to make combat where getting the enemy's hit points to zero is not an objective at all in any way and in fact sometimes could be counterproductive to the objective. There's also a great example of this in Critical Role in a fight between two players where they're sparring with each other and it's just who can hit the other player three times first which changes the combat away from just an all out I need to do more damage to you than you do to me and turns it into the players positioning themselves in the best place to get hits in without getting hit and taking things like dodge actions more often. But yeah so the last three points have been very similar to each other but forgive me for that. And of course not every table is the same. Not every DM is the same. Renan emphasises story during combat. Matt emphasises environment. And Abria, Mark and Antonio all emphasise different objectives during combat. But it seems like the big takeaway is that for more interesting dynamic combat encounters that will stop your players from getting bored. It's all about emphasising things that are not getting the monster's HP down to zero. Not every single battle of course. Sometimes it is fun just to let these all out damage fests happen, especially when characters are newly leveled up and they want to test their own limits. And it can be useful to have a quick combat encounter after like a long couple of sessions of role playing just as a palette cleanser. But if every single combat you throw at your players is just hit this guy in the face until we can move on, then not only are your players going to get bored, but so are you. Oh, and there's one last tip from Brian Murphy, DM of the wildly popular Not Another D&D podcast, and it makes combat guaranteed to be more interesting and memorable. And to hear all about that and some other great D&D tips from these amazing DMs, check out this video here.